But you, you, you can't let him get piled underneath the clutter. I can't, you know, I've had man problems. Ivy's been sick. In the process of buying a house. Trying to save money. Trying to fill paperwork out. Trying to get all that stuff turned in by a deadline. Ivy being sick and up with her all night. Having to go into work three hours late yesterday because... I didn't sleep the last time I looked at the clock. Tuesday morning was at 4.38 when she finally coughed enough to throw up and she finally went to sleep. I fell asleep myself. Eight minutes later, my alarm clock goes off and I said, not today. Wham! Christian's band tore up. I don't have money to put in it because i got to save that money because i got to make a down payment. I'm thinking, man, I've got to... Do this. Gary's paid me 40 bucks to go mow his yard. I ain't got down there yet to mow a yard. My yard needs to be mowed. I've got a lot of things to do. Brother Harold, I've got to come up here Saturday. I've got to help do this stuff out here in the trailer and jerk that stuff. I'm thinking the whole time, man, I've got to get a water pump. So I'm thinking, well, Wednesday night's my only night. I'm going to have to miss church to try to get my ox out of the ditch because I've got all this stuff. But God taught me something yesterday. When I began to work on that vehicle again. Because I thought the thermostat was sticking, Harold, because it was running hot. And then it'd get hot, ding or got ding, 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 ding. And then it opened up, whew, it'd fall back down, and then it'd come back up, and it'd ding, 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 ding. I thought, boy, the thermostat's sticking. So I went and bought a thermostat, $11. That ain't no big deal. Brought it home, stuck a the thermostat in there on Monday, tightened it back up, took it down the road. Didn't fix it. That means it's only one thing. It's a water pump. So you, then it's in the, and the plot thickens. Whew. Come on, YouTube. Tell me that putting a water pump on a 2010 Chrysler town and country is easy. <laughs> Ain't nothing about doing nothing on a vehicle ever easy. All right? And boys on YouTube, they cut and edit that stuff so much you don't even know what in the world you're going to get into. Hey, uh, you liable to get a hold of anything. But I got out there thinking about something, and usually there's a, I realize that there's a radiator cap on that thing and not just a reservoir. And I noticed the other day that the reservoir was low. You know, I'd put water in the reservoir, Tim, up to the max line. It was up to the max in the reservoir. I want you to know that that reservoir, it's up to the max. It's full as it can get. That reservoir is as full as it can get, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's a radiator cap on that thing, Harold, if... You look over and turn that radiator cap and you look down in there and you can't see no water. There's a problem. I put two and a half gallons of water in that radiator because there wasn't no radiator or there wasn't no water in the radiator. There was water in the reservoir. I took for granted that if there was water in the reservoir that it was automatically in the radiator. In my thinking. And a lot of times just because we've got a reservoir full of water sitting here the Bible we never open it and we never look inside of it and we never get nothing out of it amen uh, it ain't going to do us any good if the radiator ain't got any water in it amen it ain't going to do us any good but whenever I put water in that radiator uh, see my problem revealed itself Harold it wasn't a water pump it was a little black piece of plastic that cost me seven dollars that was a Y up here in the back right next going into the firewall that had split right down the middle and it was spewing all the water out. But it revealed my problem. I'm going to tell you, it revealed the solution. If you'll get in the Bible, we're going through things in life and we don't know. We've checked the reservoir. Yeah, the, the preacher stood up there and told me that the reservoir is full, but if we don't never get it out, we don't never open it, we don't never fill up the radio. Amen. The inside of it, we don't never get it off the pages and it don't never become alive to us. Then it ain't going to do us any good. Amen. We won't never find out the answer to our problem. It'll still be a problem. We'll still be looking in all the wrong places. 
until we get it out. But we've been preserved for such a time as this. That ought to make you shout. That ought to get you excited. Amen. That you have been preserved. Amen for such a time as this. Verse 23 said, In the very God of peace, sanctify you holy. And if you look how that word's spelled, it's not... H-O-L-L-E-Y, but it's W-H-O-L-L-Y. Your entire body sanctified. See, carnality won't understand the things of the Spirit. We can't comprehend that. I, I can't, I couldn't comprehend what that face in that freezer was telling me because I was looking at it through my carnal eyes, Tim. But once God revealed, began to reveal it to me in the Spirit, I could understand what He was telling me. That I had been preserved, that you had been preserved, that we have been preserved for such a time as this. That's why you're still here. That's why God has spared your life so many times. That's why uh, God has opened doors that you thought would never open and how, you know, that things that have come into your life that you can't explain or how you got where you are today. I'm one of those people. I, I couldn't tell you how I got here today. I remember at 18, or probably, I was probably 19 years old, maybe, maybe 18 18 years old. I had a drug problem. I had an alcohol problem. I didn't live at home. I lived with my brother and his two buddies. And man, it was wild. The bachelor pad. And, man. And I remember one time Josh said, I, 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 I was in my truck and, and I was blowed out of my mind. I should have never even been out behind the wheel of a vehicle. And somehow God had allowed me to get all the way to my house in this shape that I was in. And this is one time that I've never forgotten. I, I can't figure out because of why that didn't change my life at that point in time. Why it took another three and a half or four years before I truly got a hold of God or God truly got a hold of me. I have no idea. But Brother Tim, I can remember walking. I can remember pulling in the driveway. And I remember walking up on the steps of the porch. And I remember getting to the front door. And I opened it and I shut it. And that's all I remember. And when I woke up the next morning, I was laying on the couch. And I asked my brother, I said, how did I get here? He said, you walked in, you shut the door. He said, and you collapsed. And the only thought that ever went through my mind that God revealed to me, he said, Josh, he said, two more minutes in your vehicle. He said, and you could have passed out behind the wheel and been dead and been slung out into eternity. And he revealed to me now why my life was spared was because I... I was preserved for this time, for this time in my life. You have been preserved. Why? All this time, all these years, everything that's went on, every good thing, every bad thing, it's because of this time right now that we live. That's why you were spared. That's why you were raised up. That's why you're where you are at right now today in your life. It's because you have been preserved for such a time. As this. Amen. If you would stand to your feet tonight. Amen. I, I close here. And finish out verse 23. And I pray God. Your whole spirit and soul and body. Be preserved blameless unto the coming. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be asleep, church. Be vigilant. Be, be vigilant. Be awake. Be, be aware. Don't, don't fall for that trap of the devil. Don't fall 
for that snare. Don't, don't fall uh, for that pit. Don't, don't, don't allow the devil to deceive you and to tell you that you got plenty of time and that you're all right. If you've got sin in your life, you better get it cleaned up. If you've got areas in your life where you're not wholly sold out to God, you better be selling out. You better be serving the devil in eviction notice tonight, right now, right where you stand. You better be getting your house in order. You better be getting prepared because you have a calling on your life. Not, not just me. He didn't give this word just to me. He gave me this word to give to you that you have been preserved. Well, what can I do? You have been preserved for such a time as this. You know, that's one understanding that I've always had with God and, and, and that, that, that you know, God has given me a platform here, but God has also given me a platform out there. And God has also given you a platform out there because inevitably you'll run into people that I'll never see. We each have an opportunity to minister to each of those individuals that God has set in our path, in our direction before us to minister to. If you've got friends and family that are lost, you better tell them about Jesus. Because you, you will be the one ultimately that, that will, you could be the only one that ever shares Christ with them. Or with any of these people that God has planned for you to meet. You may be the only Jesus that they ever get to see. You may not even know what kind of impact that you're having on their life. Just by your actions. How you carry yourself. How can you walk in here with a smile on your face? Because I know that I love Jesus. And He loves me. And no matter how bad it gets. No matter what I go through. Amen. I am victorious. Not because, I, not because of anything that I've done, but because of what he done. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, he whooped the devil. Amen. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. I'm not going to be defeated. Amen. I'm already victorious. Amen. I know I, he is the undefeated, undisputed champion of the world. And I'm on him. He's on my side. So what do I got to worry about? Absolutely nothing. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Live for Jesus. Walk in His ways. Allow Him to lead you. Allow Him to guide you. Allow Him to direct you. Because you, my friends, have been preserved for such a time as this. Amen. If you say tonight, Josh, this word is spoken in my heart. I want you to come up here tonight. Amen. And line up across the front right here. We're going to worship God. If you say, Josh, this is this word was for me. Josh, this word has encouraged me. This word has lifted me up tonight. Amen. I want you to come up and make a line across the front. I'm, I, I, it's up to you. It's between you and God. And I'm going to pray tonight that God anoints you and that God strengthens you and God gives you wisdom and the words to say and, and, and puts you in the path of the people that He would want you to be in. And where you, you know, He would put the people in, in, in front of you in your path that... That, that need to, to know about Him and to, that need to have a closer walk. Because I'm telling you, there are a lot of people, even people that go to church that are blind. There are a lot of people that go to church that are asleep. There are a lot of people that are even sitting in the, uh, standing in the pulpit tonight that are, are, are just tickling the, the congregation's ears that aren't preaching the gospel, that aren't telling them that there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. Everybody wants to think about heaven and forget about hell. Well, I'm going to tell you tonight that just as sure as there is a heaven, amen, tonight that there is a hell and there is an enemy, there is a devil. Yes. The Bible says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not satisfied with just stumping your toe and making you trip. Be aware that your adversary, the devil, he is for real. And he is a sly, sly devil. Just like I told you the other day, that, that guy used that puppy as bait.